Good morning, friends. Today we will learn about the blood culture technique, which is very important to know in what uh, condition blood culture is being indicated and how we should properly collect the blood sample and how we can process it further in the microbiology lab. So let's start. So what are the indication for the blood culture? That is the sepsis when the patient is in sepsis or if there is any bacteremia. So what is the difference between the sepsis and the bacteremia? Both are having the bacteria is present in the blood. Bacteremia is merely the presence of bacteria in the blood, but sepsis is that there is a manifestation. The person is having the symptom. Then there could be if typhoid is there or the antic fever, there also the blood culture is very important. Then if the patient is having PUO or the pyrexia of unknown origin, now we are saying fever of unknown origin. That means there is a fever and we are not able to diagnose why this fever is coming. So we are saying it is a fever of unknown origin. So you need blood culture in that condition. Or if there is any condition of infective endocarditis or subacute bacterial endocarditis. So there are many more conditions whenever you are suspecting the fever is coming. That is it is being covered in the FU only. If there is any fever is coming, like in case of the chronic infection, like brucellosis, so there also you have the this blood culture indication. So in specimen collection, when you are collecting the blood sample, you should be uh, at most care should be taken. There is a chance of contaminating the blood sample with the skin flora. So proper aseptic technique should be followed. And at least two samples are needed. That is from the two different penipuncture site. If the person is already having a central line, then one sample should be from central line and another is from the another venipuncture site. And uh, the disinfection, disinfecting the skin first with the isopropyl alcohol, then with the povidone iodine, chlorhexidine or tincture iodine. It has been seen that chlorhexidine and the tincture iodine has a good antiseptic effect as compared to this povidone iodine. Sample collection should be started before starting of the antimicrobial therapy. So the proper history should be taken whether the person is on the antibiotics or not. And if the person is not on antibiotics, so you should first take the sample, then you can start the treatment. But if the patient is already on the antibiotic or you have started but you have not taken the blood sample, then at what time you can take the sample? That is when the person is having the next dose timing just before that because at that time that will be at the least level then what should be the ratio of mainly uh, we have two type of technique for the blood culture that is one is the manual and this is the automated so for manual we are using the brain heart infusion broth which is the culture media and there we use 1 is to 10 ratio that is uh, that is the, if the media is 100 ml then you need the 10 ml of the blood. So approximate 1 is to 5 to 1 is to 10 ratio is being maintained. 2 to 3 blood culture set are being recommended because uh, for blood culture, although it has a very high specificity, but the sensitivity for the blood culture is poor. So that is if you are doing only one uh, blood sample you have taken and you are going for the blood culture, so there is only 65% chance of detecting the organism. If you have another set of uh, blood sample, then the chance of isolating the bacteria or the any microorganism is 80%. And if you have three samples, then there is a chance goes up to 95%. So that is being said that at least two samples are being recommended. But if it is three, then it, there you have a very good chance of detecting the microorganism. In endocarditis, infective endocarditis, multiple blood culture is recommended. So that is very important for the endocarditis infection that multiple blood culture is being recommended. Directly, uh, blood is collected in the brain heart infusion broth. Usually it is being, uh, these bottles are provided to the clinicians and whenever they need for the blood culture, directly they take the sample and inoculate into the brought there only at the patient bedside and that being bottle is being transported to the microbiology lab. 
I've already told you there are two methods for the blood culture. One is the conventional, and one is the automated methods. Now these are the sample collection steps. So proper aseptic technique should be followed while collecting the blood sample as blood is a sterile fluid. So we have to be very careful that the sample which we are collecting there should not be any contaminant or the skin flora goes to the sample. And second thing also that you should not inoculate any bacteria to the blood stream. So that's very important. So first of all the hand washing of the person who is taking the sample. Second, then wearing the gloves, then applying the tourniquet, then starting the asepsis. So the venipuncture site which you have selected, that you have to clean first with the 70% isopropyl alcohol, and then once it get dry, then you will clean it with the chlorhexidine or tincture iodine or povidine iodine which you have. So main thing how you will clean that side that is you have to go from center to periphery. So center most point where you are collecting that specimen. So that should be the most clean side. And then you will take out in the center to periphery. You will go in cleaning the site. So that is very important. That you, you should not rub it irregularly. But you have to go from center to periphery. So once you have cleaned. Then you have taken the blood sample. And then you have inoculated into the brain hurt infusion broth. Or if you have bacteria or any other bottle so you can inoculate in them and you transport it to the lab so we have two type of media in case of the uh, manual culture method usually these being followed manual method is being followed most of the places so we have two type of media in that one is monophasic media which is known as the brain heart infusion broth and another we have the biphasic media where we have two phases that is we have the liquid also we have the solid media also and in this monophasic we have totally the liquid media as it is a broth broth means totally liquid media so in the conventional bay culture we use we can have the monophasic media where we have only one phase that is the liquid broth 100 ml approximate there and we take blood sample approximate 10 ml that is 1 is to 10 ratio is being maintained then biphasic media we have both the phases are there one is the solid and the liquid media is there so usually biphasic media we prefer for those organisms where we have a delayed growth so because we are opening it every day so there is a risk of contaminating that sample so that is known as the castaneda method dilution uh, that is blood to the uh, broth that is 1 is to 10 what is the anticoagulant present in it? That is the SPS, that is sodium polyanethyl sulfonate. Now, how it is being done? So, this technique is little bit different from the other samples. So, what we do, we have collected the uh, blood sample with very uh, with the proper aseptic technique, and we have inoculated in the brain heart infusion broth. That sample has reached to the lab. So, we directly incubate that bottle into the incubator. So in the other samples, we process it on the media, but here we have to keep in the incubator so that because this fluid is a sterile fluid and the organism is very less in this uh, blood, so that will multiply for at least 24 hours. From the next day onward, we will do the cultures. So now we will take the uh, this broth bottle out and we inoculate this um, broth that is we take one drop and we inoculate onto the blood agar onto the mekongki agar and onto the chocolate agar because some of the organisms which grow in this blood culture they grow on the chocolate agar so we will in, uh, inoculate the sample and then we will keep this bottle back into the incubator and these plates they will also be being kept in the incubator so uh, this procedure we have to follow every day till we get the colonies or any growth on the plates. So if we grow, uh, we get the growth on the plates, then we can process it as regular uh, lab procedure. That is, we will do all the biochemical testing, gram staining, motility, catalase, coagulase, everything, depending upon what organism is coming on the plate. Uh, like after 24 hours, you get the growth. 
So you will process it and you will report it that after 24 hours we got this organism in the blood sample. But if we don't get any growth, so the uh, broth is there in the incubator, we will again take it out after 48 hours, that is the next day. Then we will do, uh, we will take new media plates and again we do the subculture. So every day you need the new plates and the previous plate, if there is no growth, you will discard it. So till seven days, if you don't get any growth, then you will say that the blood sample is sterile after the, that there is no organism growth, there is no microorganism after the seven days of blood culture. So till seven days it is being followed, but in some organisms like I have said you, when there is a case of PUO, if we are suspecting those organisms like brucella, so in those conditions you have to wait for longer, you cannot discard after seven days. Usually it is for seven days. So that is the how we can do this blood culture technique. This is the biphasic media I have already told you that you can see easily two medias are there. So what is the advantage of that? Actually in the monophasic what we are doing, we are giving incubation and then we are taking out the water, we are opening it and taking out the sample inoculating on the plates. But in biphasic media, once we have inoculated the sample, you have given the incubation, after 24 hours you will take out the water and you will keep it in a slanting position. So when you will keep it in slanting position, this, flow, uh, this fluid that having if any microorganism is present, so it will flow over this solid media. And if there is any organism, so there will be any seedlings on this and you will find next day there will be growth on the media. So main thing that you are not opening it, you are not uh, contaminating the sample. So that is the advantage of this biphasic media. So the automated blood culture technique in this we use Bactec or the Bactelor. The growth is being continuously monitored by the machine and is being recorded every 15 to 20 minutes. If it detects any growth signal will be generated and it will give the beep. So once you get the beep that there is some growth is there so it will process as similar to the conventional technique. But the main advantage of this automated uh, techniques is isolation time is being reduced. That is the faster detection is there. And the sensitivity which is poor in manual method, it is good in case of the automated. So uh, that is why this automated being preferred. So that is all for the blood culture technique. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. And please, uh, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you.